Good morning, everybody, on this beautiful Tuesday morning. I pray that you are doing well this morning as you come online for the live, 10 a.m. live. Just know that you are so loved. So loved. Yeah, that song's so true. In His presence, we are free from the things that hinder us. Isn't that beautiful? It's His presence that our hearts yearn for and our hearts desire is the presence of the Lord. Beautiful. Yeah, wonderful to see you all coming online. I'm really trusting that you will all be able to get onto the live this morning. We have had a few hitches where people said they couldn't get online, but um, so far so good. So far so good. Wonderful. Going to put the music a little bit softer quickly. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you that. Your word is above everything and that your word sets us free and your word um, steadies us, stabilizes us, divides even bone and marrow, brings us in to your good pleasure. We also thank you that the word became flesh. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the reality of the word of God. You became flesh and dwelt amongst us and that you paid the price for us to have eternal life. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and do something amazing amongst us this morning. We're excited for a good day. We're excited for what you are doing and what you are still to do. We will not shrink back because we know our best days are yet ahead of us. So we bless your name this morning and all that is within us. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. So lovely, lovely. This is the day that the Lord has made. Lovely to see you all on board. So here we are at the beginning, the second day of a new week. And our hearts cry out, oh, Lord Jesus, come. And uh, our hearts long, just long for the fullness of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Isn't it wonderful? Before Jesus went back to heaven, he gave an instructions to his instruction to his disciples and said, Go and wait. Well, he didn't say go and wait, they were in the upper room. He said, I want you to wait in the upper room until the Holy Spirit comes. And the reason that he said that to them was that he wanted them to be filled with courage, confidence, power, and the gifts the gifts of heaven, so that they would not only be called, but they would be equipped and empowered to go into all the world, to preach the gospel, to lay hands on the sick, to raise the dead. Isn't that amazing? To cast out demons. Wow. So maybe you think that's only part of old-fashioned religion. I promise you that the commission that we've been given by God hasn't changed. He has equipped us and empowered us with every good gift. When he, as, when he ascended, he gave gifts unto mankind. Faith, healings, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, prophetic. He gave a, a work, um, gift of working of miracles. It's a gift. We can't earn it. He's given it to us freely, and freely has given it to us. Freely we give it away. 
And so we need to be excited that he never left us as strangers sojourning on the earth. There are some false religions that believe that we first lived in heaven as angels and then we came back to the earth to prove ourselves. And if we prove ourselves to God, he will take us back into heaven. Now, that is not true at all. Otherwise, Genesis would have to be scrubbed out because God created the heavens and the earth. And he call, called and caused and decreed everything into existence. From the, from the moon, the sun, the stars, the animals, the plants, everything. And then he created Adam and he said, it's not good for man to dwell alone. And he created Eve and he said, it is very good. And inside of everything that God has created is the seed, the seed of life, the seed to be able to duplicate and multiply. That's why he said, go into the earth, subdue and multiply, multiply and populate the earth. And so God always, always chose mankind, always. When Jesus went to the cross, he cut a covenant with us, even before we weren't seeking a covenant maker. If we cut the covenant the day that we came into, Jesus, into following Jesus and we uh, prayed that prayer and we were the ones that initiated the covenant, we are covenant breakers. This just happens. We forget we even have a covenant. But he made the covenant and the one who made the covenant, who initiate the covenant, is more than able to keep the covenant with us and never ever fail on what he has covenanted with by his blood. By his blood, he has covenanted to keep you all the days of your life. That he has a plan to prosper you and not to harm you and give you an expected end. He says, I have not got a plan of calamity, but of a hope and a future and an expected end. Expected end meaning that we live for eternity. And so once we start to understand who we are because of who he is, fear and anxiety begin to move out of the way. Self-help programs are suddenly not quite as attractive any longer because we realize that we can change for a while, but only the Holy Spirit can change us. He is working a work of sanctification, even though the word says, check that you're still in the way. Daily work out your salvation. That daily working out our salvation is not a list of do's and don'ts. It's a place of surrender to say, here I am, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and do a work in me that no man can do. And he will bring you to your authentic identity. Your identity is not who people want you to be. It's who God created you to be. He's put inside of you uh, long-suffering, faithfulness, self-control. And sometimes those things are buried under hurt and pain. But as he, by the Holy Spirit, comes and heals us, the divine nature of God begins to be worked in us and expressed through us. He always makes us look amazing because he's so kind. Even when the short man climbed up the tree because he couldn't see Jesus, Zacchaeus, he didn't say, hey, you're so short. I don't know what happened in the, uh, in the room of creation. No, no. He said, come on, get down. I'm coming to your house for supper or for tea, whatever he said. He was able to identify with each and every one. He was accused of fellowshipping or eating with wine bibbers and prostitutes. He says, I did not come for those that are well. I came for those that need a physician and those that are sick. Those that need me, I have come for. Those that, ex that we would have expected to receive him did not receive him. They rejected him. 
And so even as he spoke to the woman at the well, he didn't condemn her. He just wanted her to know that he identified where she was at and said, go now and sin no more. And he said, don't tell anybody about this because he was not only bringing her to a place of healing, but he was shifting, making a paradigm shift that a man would not speak to a woman at the well. And so he came to, to uh, shift us out from slaves to free, from Jew to Greek, from male to female. But all those barriers were brought down as he came and he said, I've come to set you free for freedom's sake, that you will not again submit to a yoke of slavery. Religion puts us in very strong boundaries. Don't smile at the funeral. Uh, don't have flowers at the breaking of bread or whatever. There's been so many different rules over so many different years. I once belonged to a movement in the early days where we all had to wear, um, I think it's called a mantilla, which is a, 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 a lace cloth over your head. And then it's on your shoulders, and when they pray, you cover your head on one scripture. And, um, yeah, that's religion. But when Christ says, I've come to set you free for freedom's sake, he is saying it's time to be excited. It's time to stand up in the fullness of his glory. It's time to cast off those things that want to encumber us it's time to sing songs of hope and deliverance and not a dirge do you know that they had hired mourners for funerals so they would hire people to cry and to do a dirge like whoa, whoa, as they walk through the street they needed hired mourners so they looked like the person was really popular the person that died they also had a system where they hired eaters at their banquets and they were like professional eaters that you could hire with big fat pot bellies and they would lie on their side in the reclining position and eat so that they looked like they were from a higher class because they had so many guests. That is why in the, the parable in the um, Gospels that says, the call went out for the marriage feast and one said no 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 i have just bought a new whatever he bought the other one said i've just got married the other one said i've got to bury my mother my father my brother and they eventually went into the highways and byways and called in whoever they could find whoever they could find and so jesus has found you Jesus found you while you were yet a sinner. Excuse me, but my music's a bit loud. <laughs> while you were yet a sinner, Jesus found you. And he loved us the way that he found us. He loved us as he found us. He loved our um, wide-eyed excitement, expectation with no knowledge. <laughs> When you first get born again, you go in where angels fears to tread. We had this wonderful speaker some years ago come to Cape Town for a healing rooms training. And he told this, this account, I can't say it's a story, it's a true account, that in the church uh, w where he was, uh, there was a woman that had just newly got born again. And she was so excited. She had no grid of religion. And she said, Pastor, I feel that it would be really good for us to go and minister to the women that are working at that restaurant with the topless waitresses. Now, I'm sure and she said, let's, is it, he said, give me, what, what do you feel God told you? She said, I felt that we must be 10 women, each go and buy a basket, fill it with the most beautiful products 
to bless each of those waitresses, topless waitresses. And he said, well, then that's what you must do. And so she, he allowed her because she had heard the Lord, but she was young in the things of the spirit. And she asked 10 women. And at the end of the evening, when they got there, they went, I asked the manager, they phoned the manager beforehand to say that they'd be coming at the end of the shift. And they were fully dressed because <laughs> they knew that these ladies were coming from the church and their shift was over, the restaurant was now closed. And they, each one of those ladies handed a basket full of beautiful products and gifts to that lady that was standing there, that was working in that restaurant and hugged them and gave them those gifts. They were overwhelmed. They had wolf whistles when they worked. They had people using and abusing them. And here came a gentle crowd of women that wanted to identify with them in their womanhood and, and say, we love you. And here we want to bless you. So that really went down well, but then a few months later, coming up to Easter, she went back to the pastor. She said, Pastor, I feel the Lord has spoken to me that we must serve a meal for the whosoever's like a banquet at that same restaurant for Easter. So he said, well, let's phone the, the owner and ask the owner if he's okay with it, obviously. So they phoned the owner and he said, well, must, we can supply the food. They said, no, no, we want to supply all the food and we want to invite whoever wants to, to come and have a meal for free. The only thing we ask is that we're allowed 10 minutes or seven minutes, I don't remember, to tell them about Jesus. So he agreed. The Savoy Hotel down the road heard about it and they said, we will donate the food. So the normal serving of meals happened and the people started leaving. When down the road came these waiters with these big silver uh, platters covered in silver domes walking from the Savoy and bringing the food to this place that was the topless bar. That's what it was, a topless bar. And they put all the food out and they call people, people off the streets to come. And they ate of the richest of fare and they were allowed their seven minutes and they spoke about Jesus and people got born again and they prayed and ministered with them and sent them out the door with all the leftovers. And they said good night, packed up and went home. The next day, the, the owner of the the bar phoned and said, can I ask the, you pastor and that lady to come and see me please? And when they got there, he was in a terrible state. He had been crying and crying and crying. And he said, I want you to know that I was a pastor and my wife was diagnosed with cancer and very quickly cancer took over and she died almost within weeks and he says I was so angry at God that I walked away but I want to acknowledge him acknowledge Jesus and come back to him they prayed with him they led him to the Lord and then he said and I'm giving this business to the church for a venue to use however you need to use it how amazing in the same way, Jesus sat with those that were drinking their big lots of wine and he found you, um, he saved you in those circumstances that you found yourself. And the Holy Spirit is the one that brings transformation moment by moment. I don't know who all is on this life today. Maybe you just flick past and you're not a believer. Maybe you're saying, oh, this lady is on this thing every day. I don't know what I believe. I want you to know that you, we don't have to do anything to qualify for salvation. 
Salvation is a free gift. And we say, come Lord Jesus. I can't do it alone. My nature is terrible. I need you to come and be the stronger one and I will be the weaker one. Add me to your family, Lord Jesus. And like that, like that. Because the word says those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. It doesn't say those that call upon the name of the Lord and join the Rotary or the whatever club and do this and do that. It says I will, I will lift you out of the miry clay. Even when you feel like your foot is slipping, I will be there. You will not fall. Even in this time of lockdown and you're not sure how you're going to meet the bills, Father says, I want you to know that I own the treasury of heaven and I'm a good, good father and I watch over the affairs of my household and I will never leave you and never forsake you. And so we need to be like the praise singers that go out before the armies of the Lord. The praise singers went out before the armies of the Lord. Can you believe that? They looked like they were defenseless. It almost looked like they sent the children and the women ahead of them. It must have, God's will ways don't look the same as our ways they foolishness to the world and the praise singers like with Miriam they went before the armies of the Lord what were they rejoicing they were rejoicing in their God they were not they were not uh, overwhelmed by the battle they knew that their God would deliver them I mean, how many times didn't he deliver them the enemy turned on itself and killed one another the one time that David went, when he got there, they were all dead. They had already killed one another. Can you believe that? And so now in the nations of the world, you feel like you're in the worst battle you've ever been in. Some people are already saying that we will never, ever come out of lockdown. We're going to have to wear masks forever and et cetera, et cetera, and all kinds of things. And even if we do come out from lockdown, we'll never be the same again. We'll tell it to our children, children. Yeah, that's true. We will because it's part of history. But the father says, I do not want you to speak about what the enemy does. I don't even want you to speak in secret about what the enemy does. Think on these things that are good, perfect, holy. Rise above the circumstances and start to sing your songs of victory. Our God is triumph um, valiantly. The horse and the rider were thrown into the sea. We'll run in the cities. We'll run on the walls. Mighty is our God. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. These are all songs that we've sung many years ago and they as relevant now as they were then so the lord says do not fear my little flock do not fear my little flock when you're down to you and your wife or you and your husband or you alone or you and a grandchild or whatever you might just feel like you're only a little flock you might feel how will god hear me because we're so used to gathering with the hundred the fifty the hundred the thousand the five thousand the forty thousand and together that corporate anointing makes us feel so amazing but father says i want you to know even as you come as a little sheep in the night i will feed you i just get that picture of this amazing shepherd seeing a little lamb coming to the fence and he bends down and he feeds that little lamb by his hand. He's speaking about us. He's, sorry, a call was coming through. He says, when you are tender, when you are afraid, when you're not sure how to put one foot in front of the other, I want you to know that I am with you. I go ahead of you and I am the voice behind you. I surround you. So Father is saying, whose report will you believe? And our response is, I will believe the report of the Lord. What comes out of our mouth in this season, 2020, is the gateway for the rest of the decade. And the Father said, this is the, the, the opening of a decade where you will decree and declare the things that I am decreeing and declaring. Jesus said, I do nothing other than what I see my Father doing. What do we see Father doing? Father is maybe shaking nations, but he's lining us up. 
He's lining us up that our focus has turned to him and not to the systems of the world. Don't think that Jesus was poor. He, there was money in that money bag that they never even had to count, wherever they were. Don't think when I say, you're coming back, you're leaving the systems of the world to become under his rulership, that that means that you have nothing and you live on uh, mashed potatoes and pro neutra That's not what I'm saying. Father says, I am preparing you as a bride. The, a bride has everything that is needed for her bride of a wedding day. Everything. There is no lack. I remember when our only daughter, I've got one daughter and two sons, when our daughter got married, there was no thought in my head about the dress, the, the, the price of the dress. I knew when she saw the dress, she would know it's the one. I put down the deposit and walked away, not knowing how we would pay the other 90%. But we did, and the money was there on the day. But you give no thought to that. All your thoughts are focused on the fact that she's going to look amazing for her bridegroom. So don't live in limitation. Uh, look, I don't really want to this and I don't really want to that and I don't like the season I'm in. God is bringing us through the birth canal, through the birth canal, nations of the world. We are in a birth canal for the birthing of a great revival, a great revival with great reward. With great reward, we have stepped into a season of household salvations. They're coming back. They're coming back. Maybe they've never been followers. They're coming to Jesus. Fear not, little flock. Fear not. If the eyes, his eyes are on the sparrow, his eyes are on you. Though you feel abandoned for a little while, I will bind up your wounds on the second day and on the third day I will raise you up. I will raise you up. You might feel that you're doing all that you're doing in a place of limitation, but the, it's going to be suddenly. The Lord said to me this morning, as I was getting ready, He says, as suddenly as it shut, that suddenly it will open. Are you ready? You can't keep going back to the mirror to see that there's no more wrinkles and crinkles for the for the wedding feast. You're making yourself ready now. Hungering, hungry, being hungry for more of his presence. You know, so many days I open my books and I'm going to say this and that and I never get to it. <laughs> God just says something else. Yes, South Africa is going to be a new nation. South Africa is going to be a nation under God. I see that I slipped this piece of cardboard into my book and I think I will uh, do that. I speak uh, in closing about this. This was in 2005. Listen to this, talking about Jesus coming back. This will really speak to your heart. I wrote this down. I said, I dreamt I was walking in Cork Bay and there was a lady sitting on a wooden bench near the station area. As I sat to talk to her, now I want to tell you that now we can only shop alone, but my children when they were growing up used to say, mom, I'm not going to the shops with you because you stop to talk to people, <laughs> whether you know them or not. It takes too long to get through the shops. And so this dream was so part of my personality, this dream that I had in early 2005. There was a lady sitting on a wooden bench near the station. As I sat to talk to her, I realized it was my mom. He was already in heaven, by the way. Who had gone to heaven? She had on a knitted twin set, a little round neck and then a little matching jersey over, which she knitted. She loved knitting. 
Then after discussing with her, I was in a meeting. After I was chatting and discussing with her uh, in the dream, I was then in a meeting with Lionel and another male pastor. Um, the one pastor's wife and I were getting tea and coffee for them. And then the men got into a car and went off to the meeting. I still said to the pastor's wife, come, we can also go. But the car was full, so we must walk, but it's not far. As we began walking, I phoned Lionel on his cell phone for direction, explaining to him that I'd walked down the street and turned and where to now. He said, keep walking until you come to a school and fields and then phone me again. As I got to the school sports field, my cell phone rang. It was my sister, Lorraine. She said, is it possible that mom is alive? I said, yes, I've seen her in Cork Bay. And that when I went home, dad's slippers were next to the bed and he'd gone to heaven a year earlier than I had the dream. So he's also back. And that your two sons as well as the other niece, had all phoned to ask me about it. In fact, I can see mom now. I'm at the school and there is an ablution block and she's coming out of that ablution block and going over to hug her sister. I, des uh, I described what she was wearing and I said, I don't know exactly what is happening. But I do know it's the final moments of the end of the age. And as I woke up, the Holy Spirit said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That was in 2005 and here we are, 15 years later. And one thing I know, that he has promised that he's given us hope, a future, an expected end, and not a plan of calamity. The bottom line, children of God, we win. We win. So today we cancel every negative report, every report of disaster, every report of negativity, every report of death, destruction and blood flow, we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. For our God will triumph valiantly and he will cause us to triumph for we are the children of the most high God. He has called us, he loves us, he has set us apart. He has filled us with every good gift to fulfill the commission that he gave us, to win the lost, to lay hands on the sick, to cast out demons, to raise the dead, to go to the ends of the earth, that not one will be lost. This is not his will. He did not create hell for people he created a hell for the devil and his cohorts. He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if it was not so, I would not tell you. In other words, he is saying, I am not a God that I should lie. Be ready, people. Be ready for his outpouring. Be ready for household revival. Be ready for a suddenly Suddenly, when you think all is lost, God is going to turn it. He's going to turn it. What do we do in the meantime? We praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, that's so true, Linda. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yes, Alta. Thank you, she says, I stand in agreement with you, Rose. We trust the report of the Lord. Joe, 
uh, uh, brand B says, yes, Lord. Yo Johan Fasachi, fire, hands raised to God. Yes, Johan. We trust for Belfast. Johan Fasachi is a pastor at Belfast. We trust for the nations of the world. We trust, Johan, for the call that you had to go to, to, to Ireland and the call of what God has put on you and your beautiful wife. And we thank you, Father, that we will see a breakout in Belfast. I thank you, Father, that you will just blow on the fire that you've put upon them, that they have gone there to pioneer. And and Father, they will see the full evidence and reward of what you sent them with. That the weapons of their warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, says the Lord. Amen. You just go for it with all your might, Johan. With all your might. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. And so Father says, my Holy Spirit, my Holy Spirit, Johan, the Father shows me that you're going to have visitations in the night. Visitations in the night. I know you have a busy household with little children. Father says, I'm going to come and visit you in the night hours. Yes, God. Island, Island, Belfast. Yes, Lord. Yes, Shirley Momberg, yes, you stand in agreement with Johan. I want you to know that you will enter into the labors of others, Shirley. You will enter into the labors of others, and you too will see the reward of the Lord. As prophetically, you are lifting up nations and lifting up the people in the nations and strengthening those whose arms have grown weak. Watch and see. Yes, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. I praise God, Debbie, that the Lord has taken the gagging off of your mouth and you're beginning to speak and you're beginning beginning to I see you pulling forward Debbie and pulling forward uh, no more apologizing for everybody else to be blessed but you've taken hold of what God has said with both hands and father says I will expand you on the left and the right and front and behind fear not my little one for I, my hand is upon you he says fire anointing fire anointing fire anointing on you Debbie from this day altar I want you to know that God loves you and your family. And Father says the good work that he's begun in you, he shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He says <clears throat> to say that even though you feel like the door abruptly shut in your face, he said there is a different door that is about to open. It's going to look different. It's not that it's a different uh, 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 a different call it's just that the door was is still in a place of limitation but God says it's time to throw back the curtains it's time to pick up the ten pegs and go to the field that I'm giving to you for father says I'm gonna add field to field that means an enlargement of your call on your life and your husband's life and he says I'm going to uh, because of your hunger because of you continually um, acknowledging my name, I'm bringing this extension to your life, this enlargement like never before, like never before. Yes, Lord Jesus, we just love you so much. Ansel Lopesha, Father says, already I have stretched you out. Already I have been changing you from the inside out. And he says, it's only just the beginning, my daughter. Don't just have a tweaking and sit back. Keep pushing into the new. Keep pushing into the new. It's like Father has opened, um, I see the Lord has opened a map. Today we just look on our cell phones, but as an, an old-fashioned map. And he's saying, as far as your eyes can see, Amsel, you're going to be going, going, going. Wait for lockdown. Then just like that, you're going to start going. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lonnie, uh, you have gone through, Lonnie Prosa, you have gone through such a big change already in your life. You decided, I'm taking my life back. And you've been working with the Lord in so many ways. Father says you're coming into a season of celebration where people will celebrate you and not just tolerate you. He says shame is being removed from your life. Uh, feeling that you didn't match up or whatever that thing was that was sitting on you. He says it 
has flown off of you like a bird, that, uh, like a blackbird of, of despair. It has left not only your influence, but the territory. And Father says, never again will you feel like you're under a yoke of slavery. He says, I've set you free for freedom's sake. And he says, keep going for it. Keep going for it. Thank you, Father. Father, I agree with each and every one that has come online this day for your good report. A report that cannot fail. A call and commission that is loaded with anointing. I cancel any place of fear, intrepidation, trepidation, shrinking back, the, the arguments of the enemy. It says it's too much, it's too heavy, it is too overwhelming. I also pray that if you have symptoms of any sickness, not only COVID-19, but anything, it's not allowed to come near your dwelling. No disease, Psalm 91, will come near your dwelling. And so right now, migraine, headaches, um, body pains, temperatures, ringing ears, failing eyes, coughing, breathing problems, eye problems, arthritis, depression, anxiety, heart failure, chest pains, joint pains, bow your knee right now. I say, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Tummy troubles, colitis, um, irritable bowel syndrome. These are all connected with anxiety. And I say, stop right now. You stop right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I decree healing over your children this day. Everything that has a name that's not meant to be there bows its knee. Be whole, be whole, be whole, be whole. Healing in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for this time that we've spent together. May we cherish your word. May we wrestle with it. May we eat it. May it be sweet in our mouth and sweet in our belly. May we rise into our new day, remembering that yesterday you said, Find a stone, anoint the stone, and decree, thus far, God has brought me. Thus far, God has brought me. As the men and women of old would take a stone and plant it as a memorial and an altar unto the Lord. We anoint that stone and say, thus far, God has brought me. I will see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. God bless you.